I've watched the Margiela Artisanal 2024 collection eight times now. That's four hours of this one show. And yet, each viewing leaves me with a deeper appreciation for the layers of depth within this collection. There's a richness here that's demanding to be explored, and it's left an impression on me that not many collections have in recent memory. So if you haven't watched this show in its entirety yet, go and watch it now, or stick around and then watch it with an informed perspective. On the overarching concept for this show, the Margiela press release stated that this artisanal collection paints a picture of the practices and occurrences that shape the character reflected within our dress. Creative director John Galliano captures a moment in time, a walk through the underbelly of Paris offline. The nighttime revelers, one passes on a moonlit wander along the Seine. What lies beneath the imprint of their clothes and what happens behind the dimly lit windows of their homes. Fundamentally, this show is about transformation and ritual. The transformation of how one's true internal self is manifested through visible outward expression and the ritual of dress. The transformation from the masks that we wear in our day-to-day -day lives to the shedding of those masks and showing our true nature when we're obscured by the protection of night, or when we're behind closed doors with those we trust, or in those fleeting, passionate nighttime encounters with strangers we may never see again. This collection is a visceral exploration of identity, self-expression, and the mundane day-to-day -day moments we often take for granted. It captures those fleeting, seemingly insignificant moments of daily life and presents them as introspective, beautiful snapshots to stop and remember. Small things like how we hoist our pant legs up as we step through a puddle, or how we raise our coat lapels to shield our face from the biting wind or rain. The show began with a haunting performance of Now I Don't Need Your Love by French singer Lucky Love. An immersive experience where, as the chorus reached its crescendo, Lucky Love shed his black silk blazer in a moment of self-empowerment and vulnerable transformation. We're then thrust into a gritty nighttime in Paris with a short film directed by Baz Luhrmann and inspired by the raw, unfiltered lens of Brisset, a photographer who would wander the nighttime streets of Montparnasse in the 1920s and would document prostitutes, street cleaners, and other characters of the city nightlife. The scene opens with a sense of urgency, our protagonist aggressively tightening the corset laces on an unidentified lover. The masks, tense music, and quick editing implies a sense of violence and obsession, a palpable tension infecting the air. And when we see through the rearview mirror of this car that glimpse of the porcelain doll, his fixation on perfection and dress becomes clear that only in the night can he succumb to the allure of his desire. The viewer then witnesses a heist unfold. Our main character in his thirst for beauty breaks into a jewelry store and steals a magnificent string of pearls, presumably to adorn his real life doll with. But in a twist of fate, he is caught. He runs, identity concealed beneath upturned lapels and his black mask. After barely evading capture in the hazy glow of a Parisian brasserie, he encounters the vision of perfection he has been chasing this whole time, the physical manifestation of his internal desire, an ideal of beauty so close to him, so tangible and visceral, yet forever out of reach. As he touches her, the howl of a werewolf at the reveal of a full moon pierces through the ominous silence of night. The symbolic force transformation forbids him from grasping that ideal beauty that has consumed him thus far. He is forced to flee as he succumbs to that howl, that unbending urge to change. 
and in a moment of surrender, we find him slumped over under the Pont Alexandre le Troisième, shed of his coat and mask, body altering corset tight against his skin. Yet, at the point of defeat, there's a glimmer of hope as he embraces his true self and achieves the honest outward expression of his internal self, balance and acceptance of this ritual of dress. And with this newfound conviction, our protagonist stands up tall and unyielding, a symbolic beacon of defiance in a world of conformity. What was once repressed individual expression forcing him into a life of secrecy is now an empowering declaration of confidence. He has broken free from the bindings of expectation, leading us into the start of the 2024 Maison Margiela Artisanal Collection. As the curtains rise on the Margiela runway, we are transported into a world of exquisite craftsmanship and innovation set inside of a 1920s Parisian speakeasy. The garments being presented represented a year's worth of work by the Margiela Atelier, woven together with 15 new, distinct couture techniques. Tens of thousands of hours of work, every intricate detail transforming the runway into a living canvas, a symphony of texture and color, captivating every sense. As Leon Damay elegantly walked into the speakeasy, he set the mood for the show. Playful interaction with the audience, romantic renaissance poses at every turn. Each moment of this presentation could be the composition of a painting, and in no rush, more models start to emerge from the misty Parisian night, each resembling a work of art. The next few looks resembled Belle Epoque era coquettes, high-class courtesans of the beautiful era in the late 1800s Paris, considered the golden age of European history. These coquettes sauntered along the runway in understatedly elegant dresses, simplistic only at first glance. Bias-cut tool delicately traced the curves of each model's body in a technique Galliano dubbed aquarelle, where featherweight fabric was draped with the same methodology a painter has, evoking the fluidity of the stroke and the value of color, from opaque to translucent. This artisanal approach, combined with the retrograding of the tools and laces, created a visual feast for the eyes, as dense rosettes and godets seamlessly gradate into sheer sensuous bodices. The mere suggestion of a gown saying more and giving more movement and romance than the cumbersome gowns of the Belle Epoque era ever could. Of course, we don't have the strict rules of dress today that they did back then either. And as we delve deeper, chantilly lace dresses appear, made through the encrustation of the fabric, where fragments of the delicate lace were decoupaged, glued together so the pattern met up perfectly, resulting in a completely seamless form like one big meandering embroidery. Influence from the Dutch-French painter Kays van Dongen shone through in the color palette, where metallic moonlight illuminated the blacks, grays, and anthracites of the cobbled streets and the greens and browns of the tailored menswear. Powdered lilacs, pale pinks, and light optimistic blues contrasted heavily against the dark boudoir blacks and midnight blues, a color palette based in the narrative and storytelling of the Dutch-French painter Galliano was inspired by. Not only did Galliano adorn these models in lightweight, ethereal silk tools, but he also subverted traditional couture expectations of textile through a technique called reverse swatching, a method which exchanges the fabrics traditionally used for certain parts of dressmaking with materials of a contrasting value, such as haute couture constructions created in humble foam. Therefore, not only is Galliano deconstructing traditional dress, a principle Martin Margiela founded this house on, but he is then reconstructing it 
and subversive materials never seen before in couture, resulting in abstract, undulating forms where thick layers of foam roll over and under itself to create body-transforming garments, sculptural masterpieces highlighted with cut layers of gauze for a discarded marionette look, or an all-over floral motif juxtaposed against wrapped legs and hands resembling the wooden articulating joints of traditional 19th century dolls. And subverting our expectations even more, Galliano took the concept of trompe l'oeil to new heights with neotage. Instead of trompe l'oeil that simply creates a visual illusion, Galliano uses neotage to craft garments which appear to be heavy and durable, utilitarian, when in reality are delicate pieces of art formed through the layering of ultra-lightweight fabrics, then printed over with classic menswear patterns like tweed and herringbone, deceiving us not only visually, but also physically by creating garments where their physical properties differ from our visual expectations. But the illusion doesn't stop there. This technique of miotage was used in conjunction with aquarelle, where a fine layer of silk tulle encased these menswear pieces with a membrane of delicate, sheer silk imbued with the imagery of light or bleaching, where they naturally occur on the garment through use over time, creating the impression of wear. Galliano wove memories into these garments, visual representations of their past, the beauty of use and the ritual of dress and transformation, a form of visual poetry, and in a breathtaking display of craftsmanship, the technique of retrociage was employed, where with meticulous precision, specific areas of the wool garments were constricted using glue and wool crepe, then boiled to shrink the fabric disproportionately. The results were garments that appeared to bear the weight of a lifetime of wear and alterations, an imbued personality and age, with volumes and shapes that mimic traditional modification techniques like ruching, padding, and pleating. Bulbs of volume at the shoulders and hips or the constricting of the waist, completely done with the painstaking, strategic shrinking of the fabric, transforms these garments into custom-fit masterpieces, memories and experiences woven into their very threads. And then even deeper we go into this Alice in Wonderland sense of fantasy and craft. Enter another stunning trompe l'oeil effect where the opulent coats and skirts that would typically be crafted in luxurious silks or wools take on a margella twist. Silk organza is expertly pleated and grooved to mimic humble corrugated cardboard in a technique called kezetting. The transformation and elevation of a common material, cardboard, into a new definition of luxury, subverting our preconceived notions of what luxury and glamour looks like. A reminder that luxury lies not only in the materials used, but in the artistry and creativity of its transformation. As the show drew to a close, the final four looks embody the exquisite doll-like beauty that was the object of obsession from the very beginning, a call back to the porcelain doll in the back of that car. And under Pat McGrath's masterful touch for the makeup, models glowed with the illusion of flawless porcelain skin. Their curls cascaded effortlessly over molded leather breastplates which merely resembled porcelain and wood. Delicate white leather handbags dangled from the articulating finger joints of these living dolls, a pleasing, joyful contrast against the airy light blue stripes of the voluminous summertime dresses and shirting fabric. One couldn't help but imagine children playing with these dolls 100 years ago, breathing new life into their graceful forms with each marionette-like movement and the assistance of a child's boundless imagination. With godets, pleats, and gathers granting these dresses volume and vitality, corsets sculpting their hourglass figures, these pieces became more than garments. They inspired dreams. As the final look approached, the spotlight fell upon Gwendolyn Christie as the manifestation of the perfect marionette. Her gown stood apart from the preceding summertime marionettes with the use of Galliano's reverse swatching technique, where the interplay of the plastic vinyl material or sheer latex rippled across the striped corset, calling forth the aquarelle technique as well, 
the layering of that sheer fabric to give degrees of value and texture. The extension of the skirt far beyond the natural waistline allowed it to unwrap towards the front, guiding our gaze from her porcelain face and golden hair down to the corset's constricting contours, and further down yet to the voluminous layers of the petticoat and ruffled skirt, with layered aquarelled stockings and exaggerated white heels completing this final ensemble. As she concluded her walk, the room erupted with applause. Bravos reverberated through the vintage speakeasy, notably from director Baz Luhrmann himself. A passionate applause to a remarkable presentation. This artisanal collection transcended the expectations of the traditional fashion runway. It invited the viewers to step inside of a painting. The nighttime characters of the Parisian streets, immortalized by Perse's lens, the palette and spirit of Kays van Dongen's brush, and the vision and poetry of Galliano. Margiela's tradition of deconstruction wove seamlessly with Galliano's artistic direction, fueled by thousands of hours of meticulous attention to detail from the seamstresses at the Margiela Atelier, a culmination of influence which crescendoed in a symphony of emotion and craftsmanship, met with the reception it deserved. Yet, amidst the applause, Galliano remained unseen, allowing the work to speak for itself to impact the audience with its own self-contained narrative, which resonated in each stitch and fold, a poem written in needle and thread. Now, if you enjoyed this runway analysis, please like and subscribe so I can continue to make these videos. I would love for you to let me know your thoughts on this collection and whether you saw the artistry in it that I clearly did. And as always, thank you for watching.